Hi everyone, Michael here. In this video, we're gonna be going over the next financial crisis. We're gonna be going over the history of central banks and how I think during the next financial crisis, the Federal Reserve is going to completely collapse. What you have to know is, is right now, it seems like everything's great, but really what I think is we're just in the eye of the storm and things could be about to get a lot worse before they get better. And what you have to know about the Federal Reserve and central banks is, this isn't America's first central bank. This is actually America's fourth central bank. And you know why? Because when you study history, every central bank created has failed for the exact same reasons, which I'll get into. So just because the Federal Reserve has been around ever since you were born, doesn't mean it's going to continue to stay that way. So let's travel back in time because the best way to predict the future is to learn from history, to look at history, and history doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes and at least clues. And if the same things didn't work back then, it's probably not gonna work today. So the first central bank in America was actually the Bank of North America. And this was created on May 26, 1781 in Philadelphia. Then that bank was turned into the first bank of the United States. And this was created on February 25th, 1791. Then there was another central bank called the second bank of the United States. And this lasted for just 20 years from 1816 to 1836. And so why didn't these central banks last long? And why did people oppose central banks so much? And why did people in Congress not like central banks? I'll tell you why, because they learned from England, the Bank of England, how dangerous central banks were, and they knew every time a central bank was created and controlled by few people, people got greedy, they started to issue more and more notes and hold less and less reserves and less and less hard money, real money like gold and silver, and then people would lose faith in the currency, they would print too much, financial instability would come, there would be a great recession, and then the central bank will collapse. And that leads us to today, when 1913, the Federal Reserve was created, and over the past 100 years, they've gained more and more control and a bigger monopoly over the global economy. The Federal Reserve almost has its hand in every pie at the moment. And really, they're saying how good the economy is, how great it's recovering. Well, if that's the case, why are they continually having to buy $80 billion of treasuries, $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities when the housing market is boomed? And the Fed was asked this in its latest statement, but it completely dodged this question. They keep saying, look, we've got to make significant progress towards our goals. That's pretty much just their answer for everything. He's like a robot. They ask him any question. How's the weather today? We've got to make significant progress towards our goals, he says. So what could lead to the Federal Reserve going completely extinct? I was reading an article from Keto News and they had some great insights that I completely agree with. What could happen is during the next financial crash, it's gonna be so big and so strong, the Federal Reserve isn't gonna be able to stop it. And you have to look at the asset markets right now. And even Jerome Powell in his latest statement the other day admitted there are a lot of asset bubbles out there. And with the stock market at historic highs, it's now over 200% of GDP. That's a full 100% greater prior to the 2008 financial crisis. Now, the real question will be is not will there be a crash? The question is how big will it be? Will it just be a 30% crash or correction? Or will it be a full-blown 80% meltdown like in the dot-com bubble? Because because things today are looking a lot like the dot-com bubble. And then the housing market is looking a lot like 2008 with the crazy house price growth we're having right now. Now, of course, many people will say, but the Federal Reserve will come to the rescue. They'll turn the money printers on. They'll start buying up corporate bonds and all will be well. Well, something you have to know is there's something called the law of diminishing returns. So every time the Federal Reserve does something, it has less and less of a big effect. So the markets already know it's buying mortgage-backed securities, treasuries, corporate bonds. So during the next crash, it's gonna want something big. And they just announced, oh, we'll buy some corporate bonds. That's not gonna be good enough. And the markets will continue to sell off. And normally what they need to stop a financial crisis in the past or during past recessions is they'll drop interest rates anywhere between three to 5%. But now the federal funds rate is at zero. So they're not gonna be able to use that trick anymore. Really, the only trick they'll have is they'll have to print tens of trillions, if not hundreds of trillions of dollars and start buying ETFs altogether. But what that could run a risk of is people completely losing faith in the financial system. And at that point, there's nothing they'll be able to do to prevent the collapse. Not only this, but total US debt is 400% to GDP. And really what we're in right now is a debt economy. And really what growth has relied on is more and more debt. But unfortunately, there's only so much debt you can take on. But what they've been able to do in the past is lower interest rates so people can service more debt, but they can't do that anymore. And also the governments have used huge amounts of fiscal policy 
and huge amounts of fiscal stimulus. It seems like Joe Biden's announcing another $2 trillion in stimulus every week. So when another financial crisis hits, they're not gonna have the fiscal stimulus to be there. They're not gonna have the fiscal support to stop the crash. Not only this, but there's gonna be a lot of tax hikes for investors and a lot of tax hikes for the wealthy. So that means people are gonna have less money in their pockets to put in the financial markets, like the stock market and the housing market. Because if you're a millionaire, and say for example, you make a million dollars in capital gains, and then you'd normally reinvest that million dollars. Well now if you're losing 50%, that's gonna be less money to go in the markets when they're at all time highs to keep the market propped up and to also put a fall in prices when the market crashes. And also a tactic the US has been able to do in the past is just issue more and more US Treasury debt. And that's because bonds have had a 40 year bull run, but this bull run is now coming to an end. And with the government debt already at 130% of GDP, they just keep on issuing more trillions and trillions of dollars of debt. People may start losing faith in how they're going to repay the debt and that will just make the situation even worse. And it's funny how they announce all these temporary government programs, how during every financial crisis they're saying, look, we're just gonna temporarily start buying all these corporate bonds and all these mortgage-backed securities. So don't worry everyone, it's just temporary. But really, since they started the money printing in 2008, they could never turn the money printers off and they're never gonna be able to turn them off again. Once you go down this money printing route, you can't go back. And now the biggest crime the Federal Reserve is doing, the Federal Reserve is going rogue. And they're trying to hide the crime of inflation and the abasement of the currency by changing the way they report the M1 and M2 money supply. And they completely stopped reporting M3 money supply. And with these changes saying, no, we're not gonna stop. We're just tweaking a few things here and there. Well, why are they tweaking a few things here and there? It's because they got things to hide. And also look at the M1 money supply increase chart. It's gone vertical. And once people saw this, they're starting to lose faith in the system completely. Completely. And so it's really baby steps. They'll just make one tweak here, one tweak there to say, don't be alarmed, there's nothing to worry about until before you know it, during the next financial crisis, they'll completely shut down recording of the money supply altogether. But we're not fooled and you shouldn't be either. And what's happening with these boom bust cycles is people are losing more and more of their retirement funds and their pension funds with the Federal Reserve creating these huge asset bubbles. And really, if they just let things crash in the 80s and the 90s, we wouldn't have these big issues today. But they don't wanna feel any pain, they just want prices going vertical, they don't want price stability, they just want prices going up consistently. And it's funny how they say, look, we wanna have inflation at 2%, we wanna get jobs so you can get wage growth, but really if inflation is at 2% or 3%, or and then in real inflation is at 5%, even if you do get a pay rise of two to 3%, you're actually not really getting any more money because they got inflation at two to 3%, recorded inflation that is, and real inflation at 5%. Why don't people see how stupid this system is and how it doesn't actually get people anywhere? And also what this is destroying is it's punishing savers and rewarding the punters and the gamblers. Right now, if you take on leverage and go YOLO in the stock market, you invest in all these meme coins or you invest in all these meme stocks, you're getting rewarded right now. And all the prudent people that have been saved saving for retirement and don't want to get involved in these risks, they're being punished and their money is being devalued very quickly. And listen to this. If treasury yields respond to the next round of money printing by rising instead of falling as they have done in the past, the next market crash won't be kept in check easily. Indeed, both equities and fixed income could fall concurrently, which could turn a painful bear market into a complete meltdown, perhaps worse than ever before, suffered for those investors that adhere to the buy and hold mentality. So this would be a very bad scenario if the Federal Reserve started printing more money and instead of yields dropping, yields rose and then people in these growth stocks would start selling off the growth stocks because as yields rise and interest rates rise, that hurts growth stocks. And a lot of companies in the S&P 500 now are tech growth stocks. So that would send the market plummeting and really that would give the Federal Reserve no tools to respond to calm the markets. And really what I think is gonna happen, like I've been saying, there's going to be another financial crisis. Now I can't say exactly when it's gonna be, who knows when it's gonna be, but I do think we haven't fully recovered from this pandemic. I think this has been a fake out, it could be a bull trap, but during the next financial crisis, it's gonna be so bad, the Federal Reserves and central banks around the world have already used all their tools. It's going to be a complete new economic system a great reset, if you will. And the Federal Reserve could completely collapse. And really what we need to do is end the Fed because they keep saying they're trying to act in the public's interest, which they're absolutely not. The Fed will go down like every central bank in history. People, I hope, will finally wake up to the theft and the debasement of their hard-earned money through inflation and money printing. And hopefully we can go back to sound money principles by having currency backed by real hard, tangible assets. So everyone, this is not to be all doom and gloom, but this is just to be a warning and to prepare that there is going 
going to be bumpy roads ahead and you do want to hedge your bets by investing in real hard tangible assets and not become complacent like all retail investors are today. For all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. If you haven't already, please tap that like and subscribe button. I'll keep you updated with the latest housing market, stock market, and global finance news. If you're bored, I'll put up some of my other videos here. I'll see you there.